as the echo of the existential sound deepens, you enter a new realm. When you begin to listen to this existential sound, instead of creating it through the labial expression, you enter a new realm. You enter the realm of new experience. A stage comes when you feel that you are weightless. Now nothing can hold you onto the earth. Quite often this happens to meditators that they begin to levitate or get the feeling that they are levitating. They feel they have risen above the earth level. Nothing is visible outwardly. And when they open their eyes, they find themselves sitting on the ground. This is not illusion. This happens. When your mind is freed of all thoughts and your chit, that is the storehouse of the memory, is weightless. It does not carry the unnecessary burden. You remember if you have known anything about mountain climbing, you have to be weightless. The more weightless you are, easier it will be for you to climb. When mind is without any thought, the storehouse of the memory is clear and weightless. As this existential sound arises, you feel weightlessness. You feel weightlessness, your physical body remains on the earth and the causal body rises above the earth level, that is the ground level. There comes a distance between the two. If this continues, if one continues to meditate in such a way that the gravitational force does not affect him, then you will experience two bodies simultaneously. One remains on the ground and the other remains above the ground and the two remains connected with a silver lining. Remember if someone is in the meditation of listening to this existential sound, never try to wake him up. Also never push him. This can be very dangerous. At the ultimate stage of this meditation of the existential sound, the physical body and the causal body get separated from one another. One remains on the ground. So when the physical and the causal bodies are separated in meditation, any push or jerk will disturb the inner balance and this will get disturbed forever. This inner connection between the physical and the causal body is very delicate and subtle. It is through a silver lining. I was 10 or 12 years of age. During summer vacations we used to go to spend holidays at my grandmother's place where it was a shrine complex. In the center of the place there was a shrine and on one extreme corner which was about maybe 100 feet, it was a big ground, was the toilet facilities and Diagonally to that, on the other side, was the residence. 
All around there was empty land and green leaves. The way along the restroom areas were some trees, mango and other flower trees. I had somewhere read that if one sits down on the tree and meditates, he is above the ground and the gravitational force of the earth will be less as compared to when he is sitting on the ground. In the same way, when you are swimming, it is because the gravitational pull of the earth is less, he can lie down on the surface of the water and float. Swimming or floating can become a meditation if one really uses it. Lie down and start to float. Keep your eyes closed and you can feel a difference in the meditation. So I used to get up very early around 4 o'clock in the morning. It was summer. So during that time by 4.30 and so you will start seeing the burst of the tone. I was staying with my grandmother. It was a huge compound. The tree where I used to meditate was away from the residential area and on the way to Indian style restrooms, which were supposed to be away from the actual living area. While in meditation, a similar state happened. When you are meditating on top of the, sitting on the top of the tree, on the branch of the tree, you have to maintain the balance. And that are sometimes you get a minor nap, the balance is disturbed. So it happened. While in meditation, a similar state happened. I lost the balance and fell from the tree on the ground. At that time, the cross and the causal bodies were separate. The cross body fell on the ground and the causal body remained on the tree. From the tree, I am seeing everything. I was aware of the thin silver line silver thread connecting the two bodies but as I felt the balance was lost and when balance was lost I could not do anything to restore this balance or bring back the causal body into the cross. I remained there watching the physical body lying on the ground for a while. There was no way that I could restore it. There was no awareness of time then. I do not know how much time would have passed. Normally a 4.30 by half five or six o'clock, my grandmother will get up and go to the restroom. She has to pass through that area. So there was no awareness of time then. All I could do then was to meditatively remember my grandmother. Because in such a case, it is only the opposite energy and the touch can bring back the balance. If the touch of the opposite energy is not there, and there is a delay, it becomes difficult for the two bodies to merge into one another. A touch of the opposite energy is essential at that time to restore the balance back again. Suddenly, I saw her coming towards the tree. She saw my body lying there. So she kept my head on her lap and two of us remained in meditation and thus the balance was restored and the causal body came back in the physical body. After this experience, I am in the body, 
yet still the body is not moving. There is a gap between the two since then. I may be doing anything, being the part of the world, being part of my family and other social responsibilities, my responsibilities towards those who look towards me for the transformation, but there is a gap between the two. Similar thing had happened to Ramakrishna Paramhans when he uttered those words. In such a state of meditation, one moves out of the body and then returns back on its own. When you have marshaled this technique, then you have known how to enter God and how to come back into life. So sometimes when the miracle happens, the master leaves the physical body and he manifests his causal body on any physical object. I'm not talking about insentient, sentient, the moving, be it an animal, be it a human being, and continues to do the work that may be necessary. After this experience, one can easily do the astral travel. If this be necessary to continue the process of transformation, not for demonstration, not for sure. This is what Muslims call Miraj or Ascension to Heaven. And this is what has happened to Holy Prophet Hazrat Apayagambar Sallallahu Wasallam. We do not understand the real meaning of the Miraj. Miraj means he has entered into the state of meditation and it has deepened. Listening to that, the zikr that he was doing through the labial sound has become a silent now. He is listening to its echo and the echo has deepened so much that there comes a gap between the physical body and the causal body and in that state the causal body moves away. It happened with Adi Shankar. Adi Shankar was man of arguments. He will challenge anyone to enter into debate with him and then he will de defeat him. So there was a learned Brahman of that time. He entered into a debate with him. His name was Mandan Mishra. Mandan got defeated. He was ready to move forward. But Mandan's wife came. He said after marriage, Husband and wife are not separate, they are part of one Brahman. You have defeated half of Mandan, I am still alive. You have to defeat me in debate, only then Mandan is really defeated. She started asking me questions. Shankar went on because he was a logician and a very intelligent person. He went on answering. Then she asked one question about the marriage life, of which Shankar had no experience because he had assumed the monkhood. He has entered the institution of monk. But because he was a wandering monk, he could not follow the Buddhist tradition of Jati Samran, going into one of his past lives and get the experience. Somewhere or the other he would have uh, entered into that institution, so he called his twelve disciples. They sat down around him in a circle. He was sitting in the middle. He transcended. The causal body moved out of the physical. In that situation, these disciples has to create a kind of a barrier through the meditation and their constant vigil that 
nothing happens to the physical body you remember the physical body without the causeless lifeless it cannot do anything it is the causal body which gives it a nourishment along with the other bodies so uh, shankar experienced and vision that there was a king who was dying she entered the his being soul entered the dying king and he remained there in that body for 6 months until he completed the experience of the married life then he left that body and entered into his body if during that time the disciples were not there constantly in vigil and meditation he could not enter that physical body alone because what is necessary the warmth of the physical body for the causal to assimilate into it is very essential and through constant meditation and so it can maintain its warmth on its own it can maintain its warmth for a little while just like when you are going up the hill you are using extra energy to climb up the hill and when you reach the top of the hill you do not have to do anything you move your pedal move your uh, foot from the accelerator keep it on the pedal and automatically the the vehicle continues to move such is the nature of the physical body it has reached the peak it has accumulated a certain amount of energy and that energy can remain operative and keep it alive for a certain period of time depending on the energy maybe 1 hour maybe 2 hours maybe 3 hours after that it will lose its resistance and it cannot survive so it has to be very quickly the connection has to be established through the the feminine energy because in that case it happened out of accident it did not happen consciously as happened in case of shankar he consciously left the physical body and move his causal body into another body consciously in my case out of accident i fell from the tree on the ground so it was not a not a conscious effort but the result of that the experience of that will be of the same nature so sometimes it happens certain things certain states happen out of accident that is one way of the existence as well a circumstance and situation comes that pushes you out of that state somewhere socrates has said if you marry a good woman you will be very successful and if you marry a person of a different nature you will turn into philosopher socrates wife xanthippe did not like socrates spending most of his time in meditations and so so it used to happen socrates will spend nights in meditation so one day xanthippe threw the boiling water from the kettle on socrates face and his face got burned and he became ugly so he said if a woman is of that nature she will be helpful to make you a philosopher so it happened that shankar when he came back into the physical body he again entered into argument debate and he defeated mandans wife you see when you enter into family life or sex relation meditatively then you experience something which 
ordinary person cannot understand. And when the physical body and the causal body can separate consciously, one can leave the physical body and using his causal body enters into another state that is known as Miraj or Ascension. And it is said that Holy Prophet used to go on the Mount Heel. Mount Heel is that state of awareness within, which is the highest beyond which we are sitting. And when he reaches to that state consciously, he can move out of the physical body and use his causal body to enter into another state. This is a state of meditation and those who do not know, who are in maturity, believe he went to heaven bodily. The same thing happened with Nana, disappeared in the river for three days and it is said Nanak appeared before God. Nanak says when there is no difference between this world and God, you remain in the body and deep down there remains the awareness that connects you to God. And deep down the awareness or Suvati remains you in connection with that which is. Surati is the wire, live wire that connects you to the existence of that which is God. Patanjali, Kashmiri Pandit and the mystic of this, the scientist of the inner, his work is so mathematical, Patanjali Yoga Sutras, that if one follows those mathematically, just as mathematically 2 plus 2 can never be 5 or 4 and a half, it is always 4. So is the way of Patanjali, Mahabir, Goratna, out of which the entire mystical tradition evolved. All have followed the way of sadhana or austerities. Nana, Meera, Kabir, Chaitanya follow the path of love or surrender. Accordingly, nothing is achieved through your efforts. Here, everything happens through grace. This is beautiful. Your effort strengthens your ego and such is the danger along the path of austerities. Nana does not deny the significance of human effort. Instead, he emphasizes that in spite of your efforts, remember nothing really happens without his grace. Now, I have given this example of the spaceship moving, leaving the Earth's atmosphere Earth's gravitational force and moving towards the Mars. As it is moving away from the from the Earth's atmosphere, the gravitational pull of the Earth is getting less and less. And the pull of the other planet, Mars, is becoming more and more intense. Then it reaches a certain point where the gravitational force of the earth is minimum, but the gravitational pull of the other planet is not strong enough to pull it. So a tremendous energy is needed to blast it into that space that is called push. You have to, something has to push you forward and that which pushes you forward is your effort and that pulls you forward is the force of grace. Your efforts push you forward. If you simply wait for the grace to happen, you can
then going to asleep, the vines and weeds will grow around you and then maybe a prince will come and discover the Cinderella in you or whatsoever be the story. Your effort is very essential. It creates a push forward and the grace creates the force that pulls you upward. Both are necessary. He emphasizes that in spite of your effort, remember nothing really happens without his grace. You have to bring in your efforts totally. But all that happens will really happen because of grace. On that person alone his bounties shall. The meaning of grace differs in the world. In the world, this is the outcome of prejudice. However, in the inner realm, such is not the case. His bounties are happening each moment, unprejudiced, just like a rain, just like the sunlight, like a rain cloud, water is falling everywhere. If opening of your pot is facing the cloud, as the raindrops fall, what will definitely full. This is called grace. But you have to make the effort to keep the pot upside down, facing the clouds. You have to put it in such a way that with the force of the water falling, it does not turn upside down or anything. Only then you can collect the water. His grace is there without any prejudice and falls equally on all. But if you are full of ego, you will miss. In your donation, there remains a desire of some subtle gain on the path of surrender. This has to be remembered that you are lost only because of your ego and you gain because of grace. And one who is egoless, who is without ego, is close to God. I have heard a deaf and dumb visited, used to visit the church regularly. On a regular Sunday morning, they will visit the church. Even when you shout, even then, he was unable to hear. Someone asked, You are dumb and deaf, still you come to the church. This I do not understand. What really makes you come here that you cannot hear this sermon? The man responded, I come to the church simply for others to know that I am a religious person. Now even visiting religious place has become a social obligation. This you have to follow. Even if you give a donation, you want to get something out of it. A bank decides to give donation of wheelchairs. Six wheelchairs bank is going to donate to the people. What is the cost of the six wheelchairs and how much advertisement do they do behind this? The news media is called, big life-size advertisements are given in the newspapers that the particular bank or the particular organization is donating six wheelchairs. The cost of the six wheelchairs and cost of the advertising. There is no correlation between the two. But that advertising is essential for the survival of the bank to get noticed that they are part of the social work and they contribute to the cause of the downturn or the handicapped people. 
This is the way we live in the world. Now even visiting religious places has become a social obligation. This you have to follow. Even if you give a donation, you want to get something out of it, you want to get it known publicly, and then it is not one advertisement. The advertisement continues even after the day has passed. And on the day the donation is to be given or the wheelchairs have to be distributed, there is a big function. The dignitaries are invited and the cost of all that. This is the difference between the bargain and a donation. When you give for a gain, it is a bargain. A bargain can never become a donation. Life and all religious actions have reduced to bargains. Do you give donations without any desire for return? Do you give donations in such places where you are not to get any recognition? It is difficult to get someone who will agree to donate there. People give donations where it is recognized. Rarely, seldom you will find the people who give the donation and they do not want their names to be known. Whenever you are thinking of any donation, never keep any record. Never let the thought arise in you that you are donating. Nanak says, learn from him. He goes on giving but never expects anything in return. And what do you have? that is yours and you cannot really give him. He is giving unconditionally. Make all your donations and giving unconditionally. You have got life, what you have given in return for life. Love happens in your life, what have you given? Often you got the fading glimpses of health, beauty and truth. What have you given in return for that? Strangely enough, you never think. All that you have gained, if you really understand, then you can go on dancing to the Trinity. And you feel whatsoever you are getting, you really deserve it. Somehow the other, this impression remains in you. And if you really understand that you have you did not deserve all that you have gained. Then you can go on dancing. This is not the outcome of any fear. This is the expression of gratitude. You are not capable yet still you got it. You can repay your father and the mother. But how can you repay, how can you repay God? His bounties are unconditional. Nanak says, he is such a unique giver that they are not the slightest desire for any gain in return remains in him. In life, not only beggars, instead even the warriors and emperors go on asking. Remember, you can see his bounties only when all your desires vanish. Because of the cloud of your desires, you cannot see his bounties and you go on asking. Never for a moment have you ever paused to see the bounties. And that day, the nature of your prayer, the day you will realize you can see the bounties, your nature of the prayer will change. Then your prayer or the expression of the gratitude towards you. Here, is Na here Nanak is saying something very significantly. He is saying even your asking is blindfolded. All your demands are wrong. You seek something and then you are destroyed by that alone. You wanted a high position job. This you got. Now you have to face the problem associated with it. The problem associated with this job is like tensions, restlessness, lack of sleep, 
Your desire has invited all this. Psychologists say by the time you are 40, if you did not have the first heart attack, this will simply mean that you are unsuccessful in life. Heart attack by the age of 40 is the symbol of success. If you do not develop ulcer, you are a poor man. What does man achieve by asking for success? And whatever man seeks, sooner or later he achieves that. Nanak says introspect before asking so that you do not have to repent. Introspect. Analyze your life and you will find that you get into trouble. And analyze your life and you will find that you get into trouble on your own. You got all that you had asked for and then you got yourself into problems. You needed money, you got it. And now all the problems associated with the money comes in. With money you start shrinking within. Many kinds of sickness breed in as well. Ego strengthens. But you cannot leave the money now. Now you have to repent. I have heard Mullah Nasruddin used to say his prayers loudly every morning. In his prayers, he would say, Oh God, make sure that you give me $100. I will not take even a single dollar less. And whenever you have to give me, make sure the bag has $100. Remember, I will not take 99 His neighbor used to listen to his prayers every day. He thought a mischief. He was sure that Mullah will not take if the bag has $99 and there is no danger in it either. So the neighbor made a bag full of $99 and while Mullah was offering his prayers in the morning, he dropped the bag from the ceiling. Seeing the bag dropped from the ceiling, Mullah left the prayers halfway and took hold of the bag, carried it inside and started counting. He found the bag had only $99. You know what did Mullah said? Mullah said, I knew how miser you are. You could have given the bag free, but you deducted even $1 for the bag. Remember what did Mullah said? I knew how miser you are. You could have given the bag free, but you deducted even one dollar for the bag. You are never ready to thank. Even if you get, you are ready to complain. A man, this I have heard, I have known these people. The man who was always buying the lottery tickets. The lottery was one million dollar and the ticket that he has bought that won him only five hundred thousand. Now he is full of complaints that he lost five hundred thousand. He lost five hundred thousand. And his wife keep on telling him that can't you see that you gained 500,000? He said that doesn't matter. The total price was 1 million dollar and I got only 500 so I lost 500,000. The wife was looking at it a different angle. You had nothing and you gained 500,000. Such is the way of the human beings. You are never ready to thank. Even if you get ready to thank, there is a complaint on your lips. This is human nature. I have also heard a rich man who was returning from the sea voyage. 
Many a times a situation came that the ship was almost about to sink in the hurricane. First he went on with his shallow prayers. Now death was staring at him. He had no choice left, so he made a promise if God saves him from this hurricane, he will sell his palatial house in the village and the money thus received I will distribute among the poor and then they need him. It so happened that his words of the prayer were answered. The ship, the storm subsided and the rich merchant reached home safely. Now he started repenting. The storm was to start somehow. Why he made such a promise? This is the reason people say their prayers silently. The people on the ship heard his implorations. As soon as the ship landed, the news spread. Like the wild fire in the entire village that the merchant is going to sell his palatial house and distribute the money among the poor. The man sent a message for the prospective people who went to buy the house to make the man sent the message for the prospective people who want to buy the house to come as he was ready to sell the house. The house was a palace like and most beautiful in the area. However, everyone was surprised when the man made the announcement that the house and the cat will be sold together. The price of the house is one dollar and the price of the cat is one million dollars. I cannot sell the house alone. Both the house and the cat are the part of the deal. People wanted to know the rationale of it. However, the house was worth a million and cat was not even worth a dollar, so people had no objection. The deal settled, house was sold, the man kept one million in his pocket and distributed one dollar among the poor and thus fulfilled his promise. This is how your prayers are. He decided the price of his palace for one dollar and the cat for one million. Nanak says there are many who after receiving the bounties ignore everything and when they get and when they get they think it was to happen and they had never asked for all this. Man never rises beyond begging mentality and thus never go beyond the cross. You waste your life in such useless pursuits in that the precious moment of life is wasted. Entire life you spent in accumulating the useless battles. All this is your doing. Nana continues. All your problems are because of your own understanding and actions. All your troubles and problems arise because of this. And you do not see any connection between these two. You seek happiness. Have you ever noticed that all your desires take you in your problems and mysteries? This has been happening for lives and yet still you never realize. In fact, you have now become used to this and then one day you accept this state as your destiny. You have forgotten the life is blissful, a celebration. Existence is ready to give you all that you see unconditionally. He does not interfere in your freedom. You will get all that you see. Try to understand this. One question arises if he knows what is right and what is wrong. And if he knows all that, 
If he knows that all your demands are wrong, then why does he go on giving? And if he knows that all your demands are wrong, then why does he go on giving? Introspect on this.